Hey everyone, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. Today, we're talking about a really important soft tissue structure in the lower leg, which is the Achilles tendon. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the anatomy of this tendon, as well as clinical conditions such as Achilles tendinopathy and Achilles tendon ruptures, and how they're relevant to the anatomy of the Achilles tendon. So let's start with the anatomy of it itself. So there are three main muscles which are suggested to insert into the Achilles tendon. They are the gastrocnemius muscle, as well as the soleus muscle, and it's suggested that also the plantaris muscle inserts a little bit into the Achilles tendon. But the ones that are probably most relevant are the gastrocnemius and the soleus. So first of all, if we talk about the gastrocnemius, and we can see the gastrocnemius a little bit better from this view here, we can see that this muscle has two heads, a medial head and a lateral head, and we can see how both of these heads insert into the Achilles tendon. And we can see that the soleus muscle is a little bit deeper than the gastrocnemius, but is also suggested to insert into the Achilles tendon, but the more anterior part of this tendon, because we can see how the soleus sits deeper to the gastrocnemius muscle. So those are the key muscles, first of all, that insert into the Achilles tendon. And then the tendon itself, as we can see, runs down the posterior aspect of the leg before inserting into the posterior calcaneus at the calcaneal tuberosity. And that is the origin and effective insertion of the Achilles tendon. So next, let's talk about clinical anatomy. How does the anatomy of the Achilles impact on clinical conditions in practice? Mainly we're talking here about an Achilles tendinopathy and an Achilles tendon rupture. So the first thing to say is that we've highlighted how the key muscles that insert into the Achilles tendon all plantar flex the foot. So the gastrocnemius, the soleus and the plantaris all have major roles in plantar flexion of the foot. Now, the Achilles tendon, therefore, is going to become irritated or overloaded with repeated plantar flexion. So when we think about Achilles tendinopathy, for example, it overloads into plantar flexion that's going to put too much stress and strain through the tendon. Natural examples here are going to be runners and runners who do lots and lots of miles and kilometers when they're running are basically going through repeated plantar flexion over a sustained period of time. So look for people who have said that they've increased their running program, increased the frequency or even the speed of how much they're running, because it means that with more running, you're getting more plantar flexion. With longer runs, you're getting more plantar flexion. And with more speed of running, you're getting more powerful contractions through the muscle and therefore through load of that tendon. So listen out in the stories of these individuals who have increased overload into plantar flexion. We can also think about individuals who are involved in jumping movements, something like basketball. But more specifically, think about individuals who jump, do jumping all the time in their activity, like hurdlers who are actually plantar flexing to jump over the hurdles. We can think about high jumpers, long jumpers, where jumping is, of course, the major thing that's a part of their sport. So look out for the overload of plantar flexion. Now, when it comes to activities that can rupture the Achilles tendon, the main position that we think about here is individuals who have a sudden concentric plantar flexion movement with an element of eccentric dorsiflexion there whilst in a dorsiflexed foot position. Because when we have extreme positions of dorsiflexion, we're really lengthening that Achilles tendon. And then the sudden plantar flexion moment puts that load through the tendon that unfortunately ruptures it. One particular sport you'll see this in is basketball. We see this all the time with basketball players who rupture their Achilles tendon. And as you can see in this video, a common scenario in which this happens is when a player is pushing off, pushing forward, and the foot is in a position of extreme dorsiflexion when they're pushing off into that plantar flex position. And we can almost see the Achilles tendon popping when the individual does this. And you'll see this all the time on court where unfortunately the player goes down with huge pain around their Achilles and they already know, they're already feeling in the back of their leg to see, has the Achilles tendon been ruptured? 
So why does the Achilles tendon commonly get ruptured? Not only because of the loads going through it, but really interestingly, the Achilles tendon is suggested to have an avascular zone, a zone which has less blood supply, which is around two to six centimeters from its insertion point, which naturally means that with less blood supply, less healing goes on there. And it's suggested as a result that that part of the tendon isn't quite as strong and therefore we see ruptures can occur here. But also this is the most common area to experience tendinopathy. What we call a mid-zone tendinopathy is one of the most common areas that patients will report their tendinopathy. So don't be surprised if people are pointing to this area on the posterior Achilles when they get an Achilles tendinopathy. Now, as well as a mid-zone or mid-portion tendinopathy, some patients will experience an insertional tendinopathy where they feel pain right at the insertion of the Achilles tendon. Now, that's important to recognize because we want to think about exercises slightly differently for someone who has a mid-portion tendinopathy compared to an insertional tendinopathy. For patients who have an insertional tendinopathy, you'll find that they really don't like the position of plantar flexion from a dorsiflexed position. And this is because when individuals are in this position, we're really compressing the Achilles tendon insertion against the calcaneus. So as a result, for these individuals who have an insertional tendinopathy, I like to give them heel raises which do not go beyond the horizontal because if you do go beyond the horizontal, you're moving them into that dorsiflex position and asking them to plant a flex from there and therefore you're putting them in that position where the tendon gets a little bit more irritated. So mid-portion tendinopathies tend to respond a little bit better to that dorsiflex position when you're doing heel raises, but the insertional patients look out for those when they report pain right on the insertion. They don't like plantar flexion from a dorsiflex position, so look out for that in your rehab. Finally, a quick mention of one of the most common tests that you'll use to screen for signs of Achilles tendon rupture, and that is the squeeze test. Here, we simply ask our patient to lie prone on the bed with their heels and feet off the edge of the bed. And then as the examiner, we're going to put our hands over the gastrocnemius or calf muscle belly and squeeze. And what should happen is that because the Achilles tendon is intact, the foot should move into plantar flexion because you have that connection between the muscle and the bone via the tendon. If you find that when you squeeze, there is no movement into plantar flexion, that unfortunately tells us that the Achilles tendon could be ruptured. So do remember the squeeze test, a really useful test to use to look for an Achilles tendon rupture. So everyone, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button. It's the number one thing you can do to help our YouTube channel. And if you want more from us, please do feel free to check out our Instagram account at Clinical Physio. Give us a follow there on Instagram for loads of brilliant resources for physiotherapists. And if you want more on this topic, we've got a brilliant webinar on our membership account called Achilles Tendon, Tears and Tendinopathy. You can find our membership platform in the link in the description below, it's member.clinicalphysio.com. No www, just member.clinicalphysio.com for loads of brilliant resources, including that great webinar we have, Achilles Tendon, Tears and Tendinopathy. So thank you so much for watching. My name's Khalid. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.